Hey, Matt, thanks for joining. Hey, John, thanks for joining. I'm a couple minutes early, I know, but or a minute early, but I got tired of waiting, so. Or a minute early, but I got tired of waiting. So how are you guys tonight? Let's see here, is Rob here? Are you still doing something at the moment, Rob? It's kind of neat. I have it playing on my phone also, and I can see how much of a delay there is. I bet there's five seconds or more. All right, Johnny, I'm sorry. I was too busy. I got, I was, uh, I'm kind of behind the gun here this week. I got, uh, I had a huge pile of logs I had to get moved. And I was out doing that today. Well, finish, pretty much finishing it up. I've been working on it the last like three days. All I've been doing is moving logs, moving logs. Well, cutting them into approximately a 20 foot lengths and then moving them. Because I got a uh, bulldozer showing up tomorrow late afternoon. And the logs were laying right where I'm going to be bulldozing. And plus I got to get the logs out of there so I can get my enclosed trailer moved. Because I'm going to be bulldozing under that, under that trailer also. Hey, our cabin in the woods. Thanks for joining. So I was out doing that. I, I'm down to the last like three or four logs right now, plus uh, all the cutoffs I got to get moved. So I think after this, I'm going to run out and start a new video. I wasn't really recording it because it gets old doing the same thing, making a hundred trips back and forth. Hey, me. Thanks for joining. I think you're new uh, to my channel, aren't you? I don't remember seeing you before. Cool. What, what's your first name, me? I'm assuming it's not me. Hey, Ashley, thanks for joining. You're in Virginia. Cool. I know a few people in Virginia. Hey, Julia. Well, thank you for joining me. However you came across the channel. That's great that you decided to join. Uh, let's see here. As I was saying, yeah, I really didn't, uh, record much of the, anything of the moving the logs. Cause it was just the same redundant thing back and forth, back and forth, just going back and forth. So I got a few logs left. I'm going to go out, start a new video, move those last few logs and do a little dirt work, get ready for, uh, uh, the bulldozer to show up. I might do a burn tomorrow. Hey, uh, Reeve, how are you? Crystal from Flat Tower Farm, Homesteading Alaska is here. How are you guys? Uh, it's beautiful weather out today. Just absolutely beautiful now. It was a little iffy earlier today, but it turned super nice. But uh, now I got that going on. Uh, let's see here. What else? Uh, been having chainsaw issues. So I had to borrow a chainsaw off a neighbor. Found out, uh, well, my big chainsaw, if you look back a couple years, I got a couple videos on my chainsaw always breaking. And basically what's happening is the exhaust keeps coming off of the uh, engine. And I broke, broke a the screw off in, in there and couldn't get it out. And I had a, a, I'm drawing a blank. Adam from Alaska cut the cord. He was able to get the bolt out and fix a saw. And after using it for a little while, the bolts backed out of it, vibrated out, and the um, exhaust came right off the engine again. So I switched to moving my other chainsaw, using my other chainsaw, 
and that one's having issues also the the um uh the flapper on the carburetor isn't opening and closing so i have like no power and it doesn't like running or anything like that so i gotta see if i if i can fix that or if i have to take that in to get it fixed so i borrowed a neighbor's chainsaw to finish cutting up these logs i got a few other ones that i got to cut up around the yard that are in the way of what i'm going to be doing with the bulldozer so That's that's happening. I got someone coming out to look at the camper this weekend, so I'm happy about that. I got I've gotten a lot of interest over the last week or so, and I got uh, one person that pretty much said that they'll buy the camper if it's still available in September after after hunting season, and if not, oh well, basically it's their loss, as they said. But I got someone coming out to look at it on Saturday, so I'm excited about that. Hey, Norwegian Homestead, how are you? What time is it over in Norway right now? And another question, does Norway have only one time zone or are there multiple time zones in Norway? And then, uh, let's see here. So I got that going on. It's... 3 a.m., only one. Wow. You're up either really late or you're up really early, one or the other. But thank you for joining anyways. I'm glad to have you here and part of part of my live. So I got that going on. I'm debating if I want to uh, do another burn or just bury all the rest of the branches and stuff under all the dirt that I'm going to be moving. Either way, it kind of accomplishes the same thing. So I might just end up burying everything. It doesn't matter. It's just going to be in the yard area. So it doesn't matter as it deco decomposes, the ground sinks a little bit. Uh, let's see here. What else is going on? Oh, I was out walking around the yard a couple days ago, and I has anyone seen my uh, short I posted yesterday or day before last? I think day before last. I can't believe it. I found some uh, blueberry bushes on my property. I didn't think I would find any because I'm high and dry here, and blueberries often don't grow in the real high dry areas. They grow more in the lower lands in the wet areas, but I found I found some and today I went out and picked some blueberries. So here they are. Hmm. Right, Johnny. Yeah, I guess I, uh, I guess the, uh, my secret spot up in Petersville, uh, it's high and dry there too. It's kind of on a, on a hill, on the top side of the hill. So, and they just grow everywhere there. But uh, most of the places I've always seen were like right along the edge of the woods, on like the swampy lowland. But. These blue blueberries got a little bit of a tart taste to it. They're not as sweet as I was hoping they would be, but maybe I should have left them on the plant a little bit longer. Yeah, I, I would definitely make blueberry pancakes, Julia, but uh, I don't have any way to cook pancakes at the moment. I don't have a kitchen. I'm still working on getting all that done. I had to quit doing that to do my outside stuff because of the bulldozer showing up tomorrow. Yeah, Matt AK, you should be packing, but it's a million degrees again today, and I don't want to. I hear you. 
I hear you. Yeah, I wish I uh, had some naturally growing uh, blackberries here, but I don't. But I am going to do a, uh, when I get my garden, part of the garden is going to be like an orchard and berry area. So I'm going to do a patch of uh, blackberries, pack a patch of raspberries. I want to try to, I got watermelon berries growing all over, over my property. And I'm going to try to transplant those into one area, at least some of them, and see if they'll grow. But ho hopefully they do. If you never had a watermelon berry, they are delicious. Hey, Christine, thank you. I guess you're my adopted uh, sister now, huh? And uh, so I got a lot going on. I got a huge pile of logs out there. I combined two stacks into approximately 20 foot lengths. And they're, for the most part, any, anywhere from around 18 to about 22 feet or so. There's a couple shorter ones, but uh, I don't, I haven't been putting uh, the shorter logs on, like the 10 footers and stuff, unless they were real real thick like i put a couple on that were like this thick thick that's like 15 inches in diameter but uh so i got that going on my driveway is fixed and looking really nice it's holding up so i'm really pleased with how that turned out you'll see that coming up in a future video i just uploaded my next video gonna release sunday morning early Sunday morning, about well, 9.45 or so on uh, the East Coast, Eastern time zone. And I have to uh, I go to the doctors, and I'll just leave it at that. You'll have to watch the video to find out. And then, uh, let's see here. Yeah, this... Weather is amazing right now. We've had such crappy weather this summer, and we're supposed to have good weather for like the next week. So I'm re really, really pleased about that. Hopefully, I can get some stuff done. Uh, oh, I pressure tested my water lines, they're holding up good. Uh, yeah, I was a little worried about the pressure testing the water lines, had some issues. I talk about those issues in the video, but uh, the water, the water lines and the my floor have been tested. They're all good now, so I'm gonna work on getting the water hooked up and rest of the bathroom walls built and uh, done up. And that is after this weekend, like next weekend stuff. And a big push will be on to get a functioning kitchen hooked up also. A functioning bathroom and functioning kitchen will be awesome. Uh, Julia, a.k.a. me, is saying uh, it's been in the mid-90s in Virginia and very humid. Wow. It is... Uh, about 70 degrees outside right now, 70, 75 degrees here on my property, and it's absolutely beautiful. Hey, Josh from Southern Roots, Alaskan Branches, how are you? And uh, John in Alaska, have you gotten up to your cabin and been working up there lately? Having an Omissions Ultimate IPA tonight. Decided to treat myself and have a beer. Even though I probably shouldn't because I'm going to go back out and get on the excavator. When were you up here, Julia? Uh, me says, uh, I would love to come back to Alaska. I loved it there.
Too bad you couldn't come up in uh, August, beginning of August. We're having a YouTube meet meet and greet, August twelfth, and we got uh, approximately ten channels confirmed and another four or five that are uh, maybes. John, are did you say you sent? sent uh, messages to me. Let's see here. Anyone got any questions for me? I know it's a... Uh... It's kind of the same old uh, stuff every week, but if you got any questions for me, throw them out there. I'll try to answer them. Let's see here. Uh, man, it is so nice outside. <laughs> Julia, wish you could. You need to, excuse me, schedule a trip. Oh, an idea is... Uh, there's going to be an Alaskan YouTube cruise in 2025. It leaves out of, I believe it leaves out of Seattle. And then it goes up through the panhandle. And there's, I think, 40 or 50 YouTube channels that are confirmed going to be on the cruise. It's a big cruise ship, like a, uh, one of the big cruise lines. I forget which one. So we're only a very, very small part of it, but uh, yeah, there's 40 or 50 channels confirmed. I'm considering doing it because I haven't been to any of the panhandle cities or villages yet. So I would like to go on that. Uh, Crystal, well, this weekend... The bulldozer's showing up, so it gets dropped off on Friday and gets picked up Monday morning. So I'm going to be doing that all weekend. And then after that, I, th I want to turn my attention to the inside of the cabin again. Uh, I need to get a functioning kitchen and bathroom going, and that requires getting uh, water lines hooked up and stuff like that. And I totally forgot in the kitchen I need to run another outlet for the... Uh, garbage disposal. So I need to do that also. Uh, that's cool, Johnny. Oh, I uh, definitely look for that. Uh, no, it never actually rained here. Josh at uh, Southern Roots Alaskan Branches is asking. No, it uh, didn't rain here. It looked like it was going to, but it never actually rained. Uh, Bill, didn't I see you on a non-Alaskan YouTube channel the other day? I don't know. Did you see me? The only non-Alaskan YouTube channel I would have been on is... Uh, one of the ones from the Mid America YouTube Meetup, which I think I was on a few of those, unless someone took part of my video and put me in it. And yeah, our cabin in the woods says uh, they will be on the cruise. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Johnny Gillum, do you have the link to the YouTube cruise that's happening in? In uh, 2025. Or. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the channel. It's something the Brahms. Uh, is a channel that's uh, hosting it. Uh, Crystal, what do you mean by let's do it, Bill? I am missing something there. 
Oh, go on the go on the uh, cruise. Oh, Rambling with the Brahms is a YouTube channel. They they have information out there. So, uh, Julia, look up Rambling with the Brahms. And uh, same crystal, Rambling with the Brahms. They are they're the ones organizing it. Thanks you guys for it. No, B R U M S. And it looks like my camera's starting to act up again. It uh went all weird. Hopefully it uh fixes itself. I don't want to send this one back again. I'm currently without a drone cuz I called up a uh, DJI because my drone is supposed to have a five mile radius at a minimum. It's actually supposed to have, it's 14 kilometers, which is what, eight or nine miles, something like that. So uh, I called up DJI because I was on, I could only go about, uh, about 0.9 miles before I get the, uh, signal lost or weak signal and have to turn around and bring it back. So I called them up and we went through a couple settings and stuff. And finally, after uh, doing all that, they're like, send it back. And so I had to send my drone and the controller both back. So they just received it a couple days ago. So we'll see what goes on there. So I'm without a drone. And it looks like this uh, camera, I forgot it was acting up last time. If it acts up too much, I'm going to have to call GoPro and let them know that it's acting up on a webcam mode. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, our cabin in the woods. I've heard the GoPro 10 is, is not that good. And actually, uh, Johnny from Gillum Farms was saying that in a live over the weekend, I think. So I got two GoPro 11s. And I've, I had some issues with the one where uh, it's supposed to have video stabilization, but I would be recording and all the uh, video would be shaky like that. And so I sent that back. They sent me a new one. And then uh, now this one on the webcam mode every once in a while just gets all uh distorted and crazy and stuff so if it keeps it keeps doing it uh, i might have to send this one back too not having the best of luck with my cameras and stuff i yeah yeah i believe so uh julia i believe their names are scott and debbie And their channel is Rambling with the Brahms. Uh, yours, yours did the same thing too, huh? Yeah, I just bought my two GoPro, GoPro 11s. I received them in like uh, middle of December of last year. So they're basically brand new. So I'm not sure why they're acting up. I haven't uh, done that much to them or with them. I could see, see if I was real active, like doing like a, uh, X games type stuff, like mountain biking and a lot of skiing or snowboarding and wrecking and falling with them and stuff. But I haven't really done any of that type of stuff. So I don't know why they're acting up. Uh, that's good, Julia, that you got it. Yeah, uh, Johnny, it seems, as of now, it seems like it's only doing it on a webcam mode. And I've kind of settled into using one camera for recording and one for the webcam. 
I found it's easier uh, editing if you only use one camera when you're recording for a video. Because obviously there the sequential numbers aren't in order when you use two different cameras. So you got to jump back and forth and try to figure out which video is the next one in line and stuff like that. So I've been trying to use only one camera to uh, record for videos and use this one for uh, the webcam. Yeah, our cabin in the woods makes a good point. The Brahms provided you the phone number to get the big discounts, so make sure you uh, check out check that out. Ashley uh, is asking, did you get your trail cleaned up yet uh, for the other cab the for the other cabin? Referring back to my video where I had a lot of issues getting out to my cabin. No, I haven't. I actually haven't been up to the other cabin yet, so. I did get uh, the one tree cut out of the way, so, but I do need to get up there sometime and cut up a lot of those trees and see see how much more uh, I need to cut up. But I got too much stuff going on here on the homestead to uh, get up there. I can only go up on the weekends, and the weekends is when I can get a lot of stuff done here. Hey, Pafford Homestead, how are you? Thanks for joining. And if you haven't uh, checked out Pafford Homestead, make sure you go and check them out. Uh, let's see here. Uh, people say hi. Yeah, I haven't seen any of uh, John's... John's comments. Let me scroll back up here. So, John, I saw uh, you say, Ashley, it will be soon. I don't think Bill can see my comments. Oh, I must have just missed it here. I see... Uh, John says, I got a lot of work done today at the new cabin. That's good. Sorry about that, John. If John's still in here. So, uh, so let's see here. Bulldozer coming. Drone sent back. GoPros acting up. I found blueberries on my property. So I'm super excited about that. I had to go out and I put a few stakes around them so I could I would know exactly where they were so I don't run them over with my excavator or bulldozer or anything like that. And uh, I totally missed a stake and hammered my knuckle right here. So it's a little sore, but it's okay. Oh yeah, Matt. Uh, Matt is asking, what did I use to design my logo? Started working on one today, trying out a couple of online tools. I used a friend of a friend to des design my logo. Uh, Rob from the Curmudgeon, I asked him about his logo and he said, here, friend this guy on Facebook. He did my logo, so I sent him a message and sent him a friend request. He accepted, and then I talked to him a little bit about designing a logo, and he designed one. I guess he's done a lot of, like, uh, logo designs and stuff like that professionally. But now he's retired and just uh, will do it occasionally for people. Yeah, I heard Canva is good for doing logos and uh, also for uh, thumbnails and stuff like that for your videos. I definitely need to start doing thumbnails. I know I'm lacking on that part.
And Matt AK is saying on Canva, all the good features are locked behind the paywall, though. And Crystal from Flat Tire Farm is saying the paid version is totally worth it. Pafford Home said, I use Canva. And uh, Matt AK said, I just use uh, Instagram to make his one thumbnail. So, Matt, you're uh, working on a YouTube channel? Or are you becoming a YouTuber now? Okay, yeah, I'll have to check it out. I'm assuming your uh, YouTube channel is just uh, Matt AK. I know. Uh, okay, it's just uh, make sure everyone go and uh, check out. And if you like it, definitely subscribe to Matt AK. It's just at Matt AK on YouTube. Uh, Ashley's asking, uh, so I know what a thumbnail is. But where does that term come from? I'm not totally sure. It's been used for years and years just uh, for like thumbnails and folders and stuff like that to view the small picture. So it comes from the computer world, but it's been been around for decades. And I don't know if it was used prior to the computer industry or not. But I that's where I first learned it looking in folders and stuff where they started actually having uh, pictures instead of just words in your folder structure. And that's where I he first heard uh, the, uh, the term thumbnail. Ah, wow. Matt AK saying it's done pretty well. Had uh, 1.3 thousand views last he checked earlier. That's awesome. I'll definitely check it out. Let me write that down so I don't forget. Hey, JD from uh, South Carolina. How are you? The skeeters are still horrendous out here. The other day I tried walking through the woods and had to actually end up running out of the woods because I was getting eaten alive. And I was all covered up. I had a big hoodie on. I had the hood up and everything. And uh, they were just attacking my face and my hands. So it finally I got so bad I had to just run out of the woods into the open. And they still uh, came after me a little bit. Matt AK says, uh, I think it's a bit boring because I didn't really film any of the work. The owners are really pr private people, so I didn't want them on video helping out. I hear you. I hear you. That that happens all the time. And a lot of people don't like a camera put in their face either. And uh, Matt, uh, Crystal from Flat Tower Farms just said, uh, Matt, your thumbnail was great. And... They are subscriber number 77. So that's awesome. And that's really good if your uh, video has 1,300 views and you are uh, only got 77 subscribers. That's awesome. Actually, the temperature here is in the low 70s somewhere. Somewhere in the low 70s right now. And it's beautiful. Ah, well... I spoke too soon. The sun is out, but I see a dark cloud over that way. So uh, hopefully it doesn't rain. It's not supposed to rain anymore this evening. Yeah, Matt, definitely uh, record your trip coming up here. 
You should be able to do uh, several several videos on the trip coming up. At least uh, one every couple days or so. Okay, our cabin in the woods. Have a uh, great rest of the week and a great weekend. Thanks for joining. And if uh, you guys haven't seen our cabin in the woods, definitely go and check them out. You're welcome, our cabin in the woods. So let's see here. What else is going on? What else is going on? Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, Pinecone Fest is definitely uh, happening October 13th, 14th, and 15th down in Texas. And I'm pretty positive I'm going to it. I'm going to be down in Little Rock, Arkansas the weekend before that. So I think I'm just going to hang around that week. Hopefully go and check out some, uh, some of the YouTube channels down in Arkansas. And then head down to Pinecone Fest that second weekend in October. So I'm definitely I'm pretty positive I'm going. So if you're down in that area, check out Pinecone Fest. Uh, heard that exclamation mark is the YouTube channel that's uh, in charge of Pinecone Fest. So definitely uh, check it out. Oh, Crystal, um, it is a little bit on the expensive side just because it is a cruise. But the uh, cool thing is, is uh, the reason they did it for 2025 is to give people plenty of time. They can make payments over the next couple years or a year and a half or whatever it is, year and a half, two years. So they don't have to come up with all the money at one time. They can go on a, like a payment plan and pay a little each month or every so often. So that's the reasoning for it to be, uh, in 2025 plus to give people time to plan and save if need be that type of thing. All right. Uh, Gillen farm says that they'll be at Pinecone fest. So I definitely look forward to seeing you guys again at Pinecone fest. <laughs> Crystal says, Reeve, roses are red, violets are blue. Want to go on a cruise with you? Yeah, the, the bad thing I do know about uh, those cruises and stuff is uh, all the prices are based on uh, two people paying per room. So if it's a single person like myself, then I basically have to pay double, which I think is kind of crazy, but that's the way they price them out. It should be per room, not per occupant in the room. Yeah, Julia, life of a single person, huh? Yeah, that's cool, Reeve. I think uh, Reeve and Crystal are up for the cruise. I know I looked at cruises in the past, and every time I looked, and I even talked to people a couple times, uh, they always said the price that is listed, if it's like $1,500 or whatever, that's per person based on two people per room. So that's uh, that's what I've always been told. And they're like, if it's only going to be one person, then you can basically, you have to pay for both people, even though there's only going to be one per room. Yep. 
No, I don't think goats are permitted there, Reef. You can you can take some video on your phone of the goats beforehand, and then you can uh, sit around every day and look at the watch the video on your phone. Yeah, I'm sure that's the reason. Matty K says it's because one person spends less in other areas of the ship. So they charge you more if you're solo because they're missing out on that other revenue. And yeah, I understand that. But I think it's kind of crazy that uh, for one person or two people, just totally making up this number, if it's $1,500 per person, based on W occupancy. Why does one person have to pay $3,000 to go when it's $1,500 per person based on two people? They should have a d discounted rate because how many single people are going to pay that much money to go? I guess a lot, actually, when you look at it. But I guess I'm a little bit on the cheap side when it comes to that type of stuff. Yeah, they do need an Alaska Singles Cruise, I think. Well, it looks like uh, uh, Julia, Matt, and myself are signed up for an uh, Alaska Singles Cruise. The only issue is uh, there's not much places to cruise to cruise up here. There's a couple lakes and then we can do the inlet. Yeah, yeah, Johnny, I hear you. Two years to find someone to go with, but unfortunately, I think I might end up being a lifelong bachelor at this point. I just saw something fly in front of my face. Uh, Crystal from Flat Tire Farm says, you can put a canoe in our driveway. We'll call it a cruise if you want. That's good, but I'm not paying you uh, to do that. It'll have to be pro bono. Yeah, Matt, I hear you. Matt says, I'm only 39. I've got time, but I also like uh, being single too much. Being single definitely has its uh, advantages, that's for sure. Yeah, Crystal fo foiled again. That's right. Hey, Ramblin' Peach, how are you? Thanks for joining. I'm glad you can be here. <laughs> Julia, uh, aka me, says, I'm too old now to find anyone. Hey, don't give up. Uh, people get married up in their 80s and 90s still, so. Yeah, the sun's kind of gone behind the cloud now. It's still bright, but it's uh, definitely behind the clouds. Yep. Yeah, being married definitely has its advantages also. A big one, I think, is uh, tax advantages at uh, tax time. I uh, the uh, the Ramon Peach asks uh, if uh, my watch hours are going up. Yes, they are. Uh, I've been over the last month or two. I've been averaging enough watch hours to definitely be fully uh, monetized by the end of the year. So if it keeps going as it is, I definitely should be fully monetized by the end of the year. I hit the uh, lower level monetization, but uh, uh, I haven't really got any of that set up yet because I have too much going on. I don't have time to do the memberships and stuff like that at the moment. I know I probably should, but I just don't have the time to devote to putting extra content up there just for members, things like that. 
And I thought I thought the lower level you could set up a, a merch store on your YouTube channel, but that doesn't come until you hit the four thousand watch hours, the full monetization. So that's kind of why I held off on going any farther on it. Uh. Hey, Rob, so you're uh, dropping trees, huh? Did you drop that big one there by your cabin? Uh, Matt A.K. said, I did meet a girl in Juneau, though, that's working at the Princess Lodge near Talkeetna. She's anxious to meet up uh, when I get up, get up there. Cool, bring her to the meetup then. On August 12th. And Rob's back for a little while. He's out cutting down trees, I guess. And that's good, uh, Rob. I know uh, Adam from Alaska Cut the Cord and I uh, talked about going up and cutting down a couple trees for you uh, sometime. But if you got them cut down, that's good news. Okay, Julia, th uh, thanks for joining. She has to go. Uh, 5 a.m. comes too soon. Have a great weekend, she says. You too. Thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed yourself tonight and hope to see you again. Hey, Brent Free, we were talking about you uh, with the cruise, setting up the cruise. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's rambling with the Brahms. Man, I'm getting all uh, mixed up here. How's uh, Australia, Brent Free? Just popping in on your uh, coffee break? Yeah, Matt AK, yeah. Unfortunately, Alaska got hit really hard several years back with the spruce beetle. And it killed all the uh, evergreens. And all the spruce trees are dead. Anything that was over about four or five inches in diameter at the base is dead now. And everyone's saying hi to Brian. Okay, thank you, Julia. I look forward to seeing you. Uh, I... Go live every, every Thursday, just about at the same time, 9 p.m. Eastern. So uh, definitely uh, look for me again, and thanks for joining. Uh, the Ramblin' Peach, I'm definitely looking forward to going on the cruise. I haven't uh, paid or anything yet, but I am looking forward to it. And as of right now, I am planning on going. Yeah, Matt AK, you definitely have a lot of firewood if you got a lot of trees down. So, and Patford Homestead said, "I just paid twelve hundred bucks to have two trees cut down and cut up. I couldn't do it myself, too close to the house." Yeah, I hear you. That that's a sometimes better safe than sorry. Uh, twelve hundred dollars to cut down a couple trees or Possibly five or ten thousand dollars to fix a house if the tree fell the wrong direction. And Brent Free says Aussie land is sunny and nice today. I'm out and about uh, today doing errands for the old folks and visiting all, them all. That's good to hear. And Johnny Gillum is asking, so with all the dead spruce trees, what is the plan for the remote cabin land? Uh, as of right now, just keeping it as a remote cabin. And eventually I would like to build a nice cabin slash home up there. And in 15 or 20 years, I'm going to be in my mid-70s or so. I want to sell this place. 
and I would like to live up there part time. And the uh, other part time would be back in Pennsylvania next to my parent or next to my brother's place in my parents' current house that they live in. So that's the plan for the remote cabin. Uh, just reading through some of these. And the Ramon Peach says, uh, looking to go on the cruise, looking for a cabin mate. Joey doesn't want to go. Uh, you should have uh, uh, hooked up with... Uh, uh, Julia, who, a.k.a. me, her uh, YouTube channel name is just me. She doesn't have a channel, just a, like a subscriber. But she's a single woman that's considering going also. <laughs> uh, that's good to know, Rob. Rob says... His buddy who's up from the lower 48 is an arborist, so he is having a field day dropping trees for him. That's cool. And Rob's always getting into some kind of trouble, I think. Yeah, Johnny, uh, a lot of the dead trees will just lay on the ground and rot away eventually. There's just so many... You can't get to them all. I do want to build a nice size uh, woodshed up there, like something like a like a ten by thirty woodshed, where I can have uh, at least ten by ten or so as a, a, a wood, and then the middle section, someplace I can pull like my four wheeler into and stuff, and then the other side other uh, 10 by 10 would be for various tools and as of right now i don't have a shower facility up there so i'd like to put in just a little shower uh facility up there and then eventually maybe just make make uh both ends of it just be all wood for uh campfires and stuff like that Yeah, if uh, uh, Ramon Peach, if you look up through the chat a little bit, she has a just a purple circle with the word "me" in it. Uh, this is the first time she joined my live tonight, so uh, she said she's a older woman. Don't know what that means, like what age group or anything like that. But she said she's a single woman and is uh, just found out about the Alaskan cruise. And is going to look into it. So, yeah, there's a few different. Uh, Johnny Gillum says she, he saw another single woman on a live that was looking for a cabin mate. So, definitely put out the word, and I'm sure someone will take you up on your offer. Uh, yeah, Rob. Sorry. Everyone here knows that you're always getting into trouble, apparently. Yeah, Pafford Home said, it's hard to burn stumps. They they are such hard wood that it just takes forever for them to burn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say, Ramon Peach. Lila Newton... Just have to keep bugging her, I guess, every once in a while. Yeah, Matt AK. Uh, yeah, if you're not comfortable uh, felling trees, it's definitely to get someone else to do it. Johnny, uh, dead spruce burns real good, especially if it's standing dead because it's well-seasoned. So it burns real good. 
and the older dead standing it is, the better it burns because there's less uh, tar in it. And uh, Flat Tire Farm is asking, does anyone want the info for the guy in charge of booking the cruise? She found it while well, it is rambling with the Brahms who is doing it. So uh, we know that we know that uh, he's the one putting it on, or that YouTube channel's putting it on. Okay, Pafford Homestead, thanks for joining. Have a good night. Everyone saying good night to Pafford Homestead. Yeah, Reef, uh, falling wedges are, are a lifesaver. I never heard about that uh, trick. Uh, the Ramon Pete says, you drill a hole in the top of the stump and and it in the inside pour buttermilk and it will uh, go pretty quickly. I never heard about that. Yeah, you, uh, Flat Tire Farm says you have to book through a specific agent for the Alaska cruise. That is true. And he, I know, uh, rambling with the Brahms, he's put, uh, uh, the link and the phone number and stuff to call to book. Matt AK, I don't know. If it uh, decays away fast enough, then it just uh, breaks apart. A lot of the times the ground is damp enough that the stump will just break apart after a few years. I'm going to have another handful of my blueberries I picked on my property today. So. Look at those. And Rob at the Curmudgeon says he is planning on doing a live tomorrow at four at uh, four tomorrow. That's uh, Alaska time, eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're uh, available at that time, definitely uh, check him out. I'll try to make it, Rob, but with a uh, the bulldozer's showing up, and I only have it for this weekend. I might be too busy getting stuff done. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Reese says to Matt AK, if the stump doesn't decay away, that's what he's talking about to call me and I can bring the beast over. Where you can dig it up and uh, have a nice little bonfire and roast some hot dogs on it. Hey, Alaska Cut the Cord, how are you? Thanks for joining. It's been a while since I've seen you in here. Is this, uh, I'm guessing, uh, 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 what was I going to do? Uh, yep, everyone's saying hi to you. I'll ask to cut the cord, Adam and Phyllis there. And the Ramon Peach says, uh, 
She will be doing a live at 2 p.m. on Sunday, the 23rd, Eastern Standard Time. So mark your calendars for that. And it's both tonight on Alaska Cut the Cord. Adam and Phyllis both are joining. So, Adam, what did what uh, do you think about that picture I sent you about my chainsaw? Yeah, the, uh, my chainsaw works amazing, just the muffler keeps falling off of it. And I definitely don't want to get anything in the chamber where the uh, muffler should be. Okay, Alaska cut the cord. He says, I definitely need a, the Loctite. Get it and he'll put it together for me. I, I did use that one other time, but... Apparently, I didn't get the one uh, bolt all the way in, and it just kept rattling loose. It kept rattling, so when I tried to fix it, I busted the one bolt off in the in the uh, threads there, and that's why uh, Adam had had to fix it. Uh, Matt A.K. says there's two uh, chainsaws in the old shop room at the cabin. We'll have to see if they're worth uh, trying to uh, save them. That's cool if they, they're good. If they're older chainsaws, I'm sure they'll probably work. Those things just work good. They don't break like the new ones. Uh-oh. Reeve, are you sure you want to do that? Crystal from Flat Tire Farm says, Mr. Reeve is going to let me use the chainsaw this weekend. Uh, first off, it's not chopping it up, boys. Chainsaws don't chop up wood. They cut the wood. Yeah, Rob, always use Loctite. I, I used Loctite the first time. Got the bolts all the way in. But unfortunately, uh, the ch chainsaw got too hot and it just melted the Loctite and the bolts just uh, came out. And then I tried the high temperature, high strength Loctite. And that's when I, apparently I didn't get the one all the way in and it just kept rattling and everything. So I tried fixing it and ended up busting a bolt off. Yeah, Ashley says, flat tire, I see you making a little main glitter. Uh, Alaska cut the cord saying, at Matt AK, uh, what saws are they? Yeah, Matt, do you know what, uh, what brands of saws or what? types of saws it is. Oh, that, that, that's horrible. Matt AK says, uh, he didn't get a, a good look at the, at them. Unfortunately, the shop was moldy and falling apart and full of squirrels. Squirrel leavings, AKA poop. Sorry to hear that. Maybe those saws aren't any good then. So let's see here. Oh, the sun's coming back out. That's awesome. That's really good. I am going to go out and start on a new channel or a new, new channel. A new video here tonight after I get done here. Even though I got two or three in the works already, and I just uploaded one that's going to go live Sunday morning at 9.45 Eastern Standard Time. 
And Matty K says he'll know in a couple weeks what the uh, chainsaws are. And Adam from Alaska cut the cord saying if they're steals, we can make them run. That's cool. Yeah, my property is definitely going to be changing this weekend. Got the bulldozer coming, and it's going to, uh, my big pile of dirt's getting leveled out, and then I'm bulldozing a bunch of other dirt. So, looking forward to uh, making a good video from this weekend and getting this property situated a little bit. Get it looking nice again. And Flat Tire Farms is asking Adam from Alaska Cut the Cord, and my camera just went crazy again. I saw. Uh, do you know how to rebuild a 1963 Onan generator? And Matty Case saying he'll definitely let Adam from Alaska Cut the Cord know what the chainsaws are. And are you having a housewarming party, Matt AK? Actually, are you having a cabin warm, warming party? Uh, Crystal was asking, what's next after the bulldozer work? I'm working on the inside of the cabin. I need to get a functioning bathroom and kitchen. So I need to get um, the water lines hooked up. So that means all the filters and the pressure tank and everything hooked up. I need to uh, move a couple drain lines in the bathroom. The Well, I got to finish installing the shower. And then the drain line for the bathroom sink, I need to... It's too close up against the wall, so I need to move it over a couple inches so it comes up through the base of the cabinet. And then... I need to move the toilet over about three inches and back about two inches. It's I, I was trying to plan it out perfect, but I was off when I uh, planned it. So I need to move it a little bit. And so I need to do those and then just get the water lines hooked up, get the kitchen functioning as a kitchen so I can start uh, getting some of my stuff put away and uh able to cook in the kitchen and stuff like that. And in doing all of that will also mean getting the electric all hooked up and functioning. I need to get, I got a, uh, a breaker panel. So I need to get all the lines run into the breaker panel and then I can get all the outlets and light switches and stuff in the cabin uh, functioning. So I'm definitely looking forward to all that. Yeah. Uh, Matt AK, it's definitely good to uh, not be very specific about where, uh, where the cabin is and stuff like that. Even though in Alaska, it's pretty safe. Because you don't have the the hundred million or whatever people like in the lower forty eight, so it is pretty safe up here. But it is always a good idea not to uh, give a exact position of where you are. Like I, I say, I'm in Willow, but that's all the more specific I say publicly. But it's not too hard. Everyone's uh, property is uh, on public record. So if you find out a person's first and last name, then you can look up their property and stuff like that. Or most YouTube channels that are monetized is a, is listed as an actual business. So you can always look up the 
business. Most of them do do a business name via whatever their YouTube channel is or very, very similar. And then you can look it up and find out where the actual address is for the business. But it's definitely good just not to uh, do an exact location. And watch out when you're filming, if you're out driving around and stuff. I always, uh, I'll film going out to my uh, road that I live on. And I'll film a couple seconds maybe on that. And then I don't film anything until I'm about a mile away. And then I'll film other stuff. And I try to never film any uh, street signs or anything like that. So a uh, little, little uh, hints there. And uh, Adam from Alaska cut the cord and Flat Tire Farm is talking about the generator. I mean, Matt, uh, you can film in town and stuff like that. And you can film going into town and stuff. Just uh, you got to just decide uh, things like don't ever uh, film where you turn off the highway. And then when you're traveling back through the side roads and stuff like that, just try to never film any street signs or anything like that. And then it makes it a lot harder for people to figure out where you live. And if there's any, uh, any very distinct landmarks, try not to film those. Or people can look on a map and find the distinct lane mark and then they can uh, find you. Yeah, good idea. You got you to gotta definitely decide on how much you want to share and how much you don't there, Matt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If the owners are asking you not to, and you're living there free, then yeah, do what they uh, ask you to. <laughs> Ashley, that that sucks. Ashley says, uh, "Talk about public records." She bought her house at an auction. It was part of a well-known family farm. The local paper published my name, address, and how much I paid on the front page. That's that's ridiculous that they did that. Yeah, Matt. There's a lot of land to be uh, had. Take this next uh, next uh, six months to a year and drive around Alaska to figure out where you want to live. I know I, I believe you've already been up here before, but re-drive around and then look for land in whatever area you like and then uh, find land there and then uh, go that route. Uh, Johnny Gilham says, most everyone knows us, but most think we live where the cattle are. Yeah. Uh, I remember you saying uh, the family, the cattle land's been in your family for several generations now. So most people in that area would assume that. Especially, doesn't your brother live close by where the cattle land is? So I can see why they would think that. 
and that's kind of what I want to do uh, uh, for retirement. I want to move back to Pennsylvania, at least part time. My brother lives right beside my parents. My parents built a really nice uh, post and beam house about 20 years ago, 20, 22 years ago, something like that. And I want to get the house when they pass on and I'll live there in my retirement years, commute back and forth from the place in Pennsylvania and up here. Do a couple months back there, a couple months up here, that type of thing. And with my brother living right next door, that'll be a good thing. He'll be able to watch the property and stuff like that also when I'm not there. And uh, Crystal from Flat Tower Farms is telling Matt, take time to find the right land. Took them two years looking at every property from uh, Point uh, Mackenzie to Talkeetna. Got to watch out for grandfathered and utility easements for lines that don't exist. That's right. I think technically I have a utility easement on my property. But they're never going to use it because the road back there and the road that I pull out onto and the road over that way all have utility lines on them. So there's no reason for them to cut across my property. It makes absolutely no sense that they would need to cut across my property ever. So I'm, I'm not too worried about that part. And Matty Case that says to Flat Tire Farms, I'll only be able to afford an acre or two, so hopefully that'll be less of an issue. Well, I've seen some crazy things with an easement running down the center of the property and different things like that. Or an easement along the side, but that's the only side that is buildable because the other side is swamp or something like that. Uh, Johnny, uh, don't have to worry about that. Uh, there's not going to be any major lines going out, going through my property. Uh, there's, there's nothing out that way for uh, major lines to go to or anything like that. So don't have to worry about that. And this area... This general area is too populated for them to bring major uh, power lines through or anything like that. So they're not going to do any big uh, power line build or anything like that through this area. There's a lot of land across the highway that is like uh, just wooded land and vacant land. And there's actually uh, high powered lines on the other side of the highway, which is only a, a few miles away. So that's where the big power lines are. And like I said, there's nothing out this way for them to ever come this, this direction with the power lines. Not in this area anyways. Yeah, uh, Flat Tire Farms is saying on the other side of the highway has natural gas pipeline uh, grafted in. Looks like nothing, but there is a uh, there's nothing there but untouched forest. And Reeve is saying, also, Johnny, the major uh, inner tie lines are on the other side of the highway, on their side of the highway. And Reeve is agreeing with everything that I said. There's no reason for any lines to come through my property. And Crystal at Flat Tire Farms is, yeah. Matt, sometimes uh, you'll find a much better deal getting larger parcels of land. And and with Scylla, you can uh, spend 40000 on an acre of land. Out here in Willow, we paid less than uh, 2000 an acre. So that's 
So definitely can, uh, don't just limit your search to like an acre or something like that. Look at the larger parcels also. Sometimes you can find a, a couple acres for twenty or thirty thousand dollars, or ten or twenty acres for twenty or thirty thousand dollars. So definitely uh, look look bigger also. And Johnny at Gillen Farms is saying they put a huge line over all the residential lines over near where the cattle were for quarry. They decided to build where nothing was. Yeah, I can see that happening. They brought it from Kansas all the way there. Wow, that's a long ways. Yeah, Crystal is definitely right. Uh, you're able to find large parcel of land for not very much more than an acre in town. When a developer buy uh, pays to have property subdivided, he plans on developing it and making a crap load of money on it. That is true. Yeah, Matt, uh, you might have to, uh, depending on how set you are in your local area, uh, if you go a little bit bigger or maybe to a different area, depending on what you're, uh, uh, what you want and look are looking for, you might have to go to a different area that's a little bit farther out or something like that, but you can definitely find some good land for 50k. And Crystal's right. In many cases out here, undeveloped land in larger parcels cost about the same as an acre or two of developed land. That is true. And there's a lot of good uh, uh, land between Willow and Telkeetna. Nice sized parcels, 5, 10, 20 acres. And Ashley Anderson says, I've been looking for land in AK. A lot to consider. Definitely, Ashley. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, I hear you. It's crazy. You said there's one listing, and I, I'm sure I've seen it. Some guy wants 180000 for five acres in Willow with just a couple small shacks on it. Yeah, some people are just ridiculous how much they're asking for land and some of it will sit there for years on the market but if they can wait years and then finally come down a little bit on the price they might get close to it but who knows Let's see here. We've been at this for an hour and 23 minutes now. I think I'll end it here at an hour and a half. Oh, Matt, the other trick is is to get like a, uh, a program like Onyx Hunt that you can look at all the properties, find out who the owner is and their uh, tax address and stuff like that. Find the perfect uh, lot that you want and then contact them and ask them if they're willing to sell. I heard of one guy here in Willow. That's what he did a number of years ago and got the amount of land he wanted in the area he wanted for the price he wanted. He contacted the owners and they were like, yeah, we were going to build something on it 10 years ago, but I don't think we're ever going to. So, yeah, we'll sell it to you. So that's always one way to look for land. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a, another good place to look is a GIS borough sites. They have all the properties and the owners and all that type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, Johnny, I'm sure uh, you get a lot of offers on that farmland down there. A lot of people want farmland. Definitely can't go wrong with buying farmland. Yeah, Matt, I'm sure they do, but you definitely want to look at both because uh, up here in Alaska, um, aerial uh, images, does not they don't get updated very often. So you want to definitely look and see if a house has been updated or anything like that, or not updated, but a house has been built on a local property or anything like that. Ah, medical marijuana growers looking for 10 plus acres. Yeah, I can I can see that they need a lot of land to grow a lot of marijuana. Yeah. Yeah, Crystal's right. If the realtor tells you it's a meadow in their aerial footage, uh, it's a swamp. Oh, another another thing to do, Matt, is uh, look at the tax cells, the municipality tax cells. But definitely do your research on the property ahead of time and make sure there's no other liens and stuff like that on the property because i know the matsu borough every couple years they have a bunch of uh properties they put up for uh tax tax lien sales okay uh to grow medical uh marijuana or commercial marijuana at least in oklahoma you got to have 10 plus acres Yeah, that's good. Uh, also, are you signed up for the Matsu Burrow land sales, the, the regular land sales? You're going to get some uh, good land. And uh, I know the Matsu Burrow sells the land for the assessed property value, not, not the uh, actual selling price. Yeah, go to... Uh, uh, land sales at the Matsu Borough and uh, you can call up the number. I forget the lady's name, but uh, she can put you on a list, an uh, email list. Yeah, up here uh, definitely don't have to have 10 acres. Most, pe most people grow indoors obviously because you can't grow outside all winter long so most people grow indoors up here so it's just a little warehouse or something like that that they convert into a grow grow uh, facility yeah johnny gillum uh Reeve Carlson is the husband to Crystal of Flat Tire Farms. And they're just uh, several miles away from me, not too far. And we're, we're all in Willow. But pretty much anywhere in Alaska, everyone grows obviously in, in warehouses because you can't grow outside up here. The season's too short. The ground is too cold, so uh, marijuana doesn't grow very well up here outside. Yeah, Matt, if you're going to uh, do a YouTube channel, Willow's the place to be. Either either if you're going to do YouTube 
or dog mushing, Willow is a place to be. I know there's like a dozen channels here in Willow alone. And Crystal was making a joke. You'll have pot sickles growing a weed outside up here. Well, it's 6.30. I've been on here for an hour and a half. I think I'm going to go. I need to uh, get outside, get my next video started, and get a little bit, get a few more logs moved. The last few logs moved over. And then I can work on getting my trailer moved tomorrow. And all the cutoffs moved and things like that. So I'm going to end this stream now. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, Johnny from Gillum Farms, Crystal from Flat Tire Farms, Matt AK, uh, Reeve from Flat Tire Farms, Ashley Anderson, if you're still here, thanks for joining. Uh, let's see here. Uh, whoever else is hiding in the background, uh, Alaska cut, cut the cord if you're still here. Thanks for joining. Uh, Rob at Curmudgeon, thanks for joining. Uh, the Ramon Peach, if you're still here, thanks for joining. And uh, AFJ, well, thank you for uh, listening in tonight. Have a good night. Good night, Ashley. Good night, Ramblin' Peach. Good night, everyone.